Hello everyone. So, we will continue with the psychological scaling system. So, in last class we have discussed the there are uh, four different types of psychological scaling nominal scale, ordinal scale, interval scale and ratio scale. We have discussed the nominal scale which actually talks about the equality. Okay. Like we have mentioned that wool if we give uh, 0 and uh, silk we can give 1 that means all silk we have to give 1 and uh, all wool we have to give uh, 0 that means 0 means equality in the uh, characteristics we are we we are we uh, we cannot differentiate okay we can only differentiate between wool and silk then we tell our character so in within wool we are not we are not able to differentiate so nominal scale is a very simple one so we just differentiate between wool and silk so within wool there may be 100 different types of wool but nominal scale as we have mentioned it's a zero is as a wool we cannot do stop there we cannot differentiate between wool 1 wool 2 wool 3 okay for that that's a, it's a next scale which is called ordinal scale ordinal scale takes care of equality as well as relative position like equality means like uh, nominal scale it's a uh, here just like a nominal scale it takes care of it's a separate out wool as 0 silk as 1 but within 0 within wool it will talk about the relative position that is the second level like it is a class in a class in a class say 10th class uh, 11th 10th you just uh, we can give it as a or 11th it is a b. So, as per nominal uh, scale 10th means a we are cannot but ordinal if we talk then it will actually give as per rank or marks it will give you 1 2 3 4 5 six. so it ranks the student its relative position of the student so this is this is called it's a ordinal scale like if we take the example of textile material like earlier material so wool was 0 and silk was 1 now within wool we have say 10 different types of wool we want to differentiate so zero is wool then zero and uh, difference in terms of softness or hand feeling okay zero softest zero harsh like that we can rank okay. it indicates the relative position of the objects as per the softness level which one is top okay like that. but the magnitude of difference of the object we cannot measure it's uh, not the magnitude of the object like say we have three different types of wool wool 1 wool 2 wool 3 wool 1 is the uh, very soft there is a medium soft and it's a uh, harsh wool 3 is harsh this much it can tell okay the ordinal scale a silk also silk 1 silk 2 silk 3 but it cannot tell that okay difference between wool 1 to wool 2 or wool 2 to wool 3 whether it's a equal difference it cannot tell how much difference it's there it can so this scale only gives the it's a ranking suppose in the softness scale the cotton gets the rank of second so what we are doing we are trying to rank of the all the diff available fiber in our lab so we have got the wool silk cotton polyester all the fiber so that is the we are trying to rank so rank scale the uh, in the softness uh, the cotton gets the second rank and polyester gets the tenth rank so as per this ordinal scale we cannot say that 
cotton is 5 times softer than polyester. The difference it cannot say, it cannot identify the difference. It only ranks the item from highest to lowest, okay. that much ranking it will give you. Okay. So, what we can do? We can actually use some non parametric statistics. What is that? Mode or median we can use, but mean we cannot. Like if we want to rank which fiber is at the middle as per the softness value, that we can do, but we cannot perform the mean value. Similarly, hierarchy in a an organ in an organization like top president and a vice president like that, we can rank it okay, depending on the uh, rank of the in the organization. After this ordinal scale, next scale is that interval scale. What interval scale says that it determines the equality, determines the equality like our nominal scale plus its relative position, the ranking is there and then it talks about the magnitude of difference. It is a the interval scale, it takes care of the magnitude of difference, its magnitude should be same, it, it will tell. Okay. Best example is that it is a numbers are used to rank the objects or events, numerically equal distance of the interval scales represent equal distance in the characteristics. So, another thing is 0 is not fixed here, this has got a 0 and their unit of measurement are not fixed. Okay. It indicates the relative position of the object and the magnitude of difference between the objects. The most common example is our if you see that is box and banken technique which we use we use the three factor three label box and banken we use the, we use the code the it's a minus 1 0 and plus 1 label 0 doesn't mean it's absolute 0 it's a label but here we can say the difference between minus 1 and 0 and 0 and plus 1 of a particular attribute it's same so this is the magnitude of difference is same now we can see like wool fiber we are tracking with softness we have measured, softness we have measured at different level of softness we have measured. So, 20, 30, 40, okay. so 30 being the center we code it as 0 or, a, or we can use 20, 30, 40. So, that, that way the magnitude of difference would be same. But here one catch is there, it is a 0, it does not mean it is absolute 0, 0 it is a it is a scale factor. For example, 0 degree Celsius is not an absolute 0, okay, but 0 degree 0 centimeter is an absolute a, because 0 centimeter length is a an absolute length, but 0 degree Celsius is not absolute 0 temperature, it is a in a Kelvin, it is a it is absolute. For example, if we talk about say 0 degree Celsius and say it is not 10 times warmer than 0 degree Celsius, it is not 10 times warmer, it is a reference and in between, but the intervals are equal. The here the intervals are equal, but no absolute value, 0 value. This uh, magnitude of difference is equal. So, here 0 is not absolute. So, perception wise will not get 10 times warm warmth than 0 degree Celsius or 1 degree Celsius. So, that perception wise it is not same. The scale is not only classified and order of measure, but in the order of measurement, but also specify the distance between each interval on the scale. Okay. So, this is the thermal scale okay thermal scale you can give excellent very good good poor worst okay this way you, we can give some particular point okay so this way we can uh, and last one is the ratio scale ratio scale talks uh, about the equality 
relative position, magnitude of difference and with a meaningful 0. It has to have a particular absolute 0 value like Kelvin scale. So, it has an absolute 0 value, zero value like 10 degree Celsius is not twice as hot as 5 degree Celsius, but 10 degree Kelvin is twice as hot as 5 degree Kelvin. So, if you have absolute 0 value, then you can compare like 10 centimeter is double to that of 5 centimeter, it has got absolute 0 value. Okay. So, if we see in tabular form, it is a totality, if you see nominal scale, it determines only the equality, okay. it categorizes the categorization and classification, okay. it only categorizes wool is 0, silk is 1, it categorizes and what type of statistics we can use? Count, we can measure the count mode or percentage, chi square, this type of statistics we can use. Ordinal scale, what is there? It is a determines the equality and relative position. It can rank, it can rank the objects and different types of uh, like median, ANOVA, 2, 2 ANOVA, this type of statistics we can use. Then interval, it talks about the equality, relative position, magnitude of difference and the we can use uh, it is in uh, it is used in say index numbering, attitude measurement, perception measurement. So, interval we can use perception means it is a warmth or cold this type of perception measurement we use interval scale. Okay. Mean standard deviation all this type of uh, statistical tool, tool we can use ratio scale it determines the equality relative position and uh, magnitude of difference with meaningful 0. Okay. So, entire statistical performance we can do. Okay. Next is that another type of scale, it talks about the rating scale and this rating scale is extensively used in market research. It is one of the most important method which are frequently used for subjective evaluation. There are two types of rating scale one is called comparative rating scale and another is non comparative rating scale. Okay. Now, so uh, this comparative rating scales are again subdivided by paired comparative rating scale. So, paired comparative rating scale. So, what does it mean? We will have pair okay, A and B, then we can compare, I will discuss in detail, then rank order. So, we can we do not have uh, the pair, we have one single item, okay. then we can order in terms of rank that is rank order comparative uh, rating scale. So, comparative means you have to have more than one attributes, one, one uh, object like wool. So, wool and silk we have two uh, type of uh, fiber. So, when there is a two a pair of objects, so we can use paired comparatives. Like we have 10 different types of wool, so there what we will use? We will use, we will use comparative scale, but in rank order, rank order. So, we can order wool 1, wool 2, wool 3 like depending on a different types of subjective assessment. Okay. Then constant sum. So, we can have particular uh, different uh, perception and then we can add, add the perception value and then we can totally get the constant sum, we will discuss in detail. Then this is comparative, comparative means more than one object should be there, but uh, non-comparative is that we have single object, one particular garment, okay, a garment and I have to actually rate, rate in terms of say uh, thermal comfort. So, in that case we can use the non-comparative scale okay. and comparative scale is we can use where we have more than one object. Okay. 
So, non comparative uh, scale it is a continuous rating. So, we can have at a continuous scale we can just use a particular value and itemized rating scale a non comparative itemized rating scale is the again subdivided into three types one is Likert scale, staple scale and semantic differential rating scale. So, this we will discuss one by one. So, comparative rating scale as we have discussed it is a it has got a two types in this scale some standards are provided that means, we have to compare okay, to the respondent during rating time for comparison. So, we have to have one standard then we can compare. Okay. So, as we have discussed it is a paired comparison rank order and constant sum. So, here we have to give one standard okay. then the respondent will give the response. Paired comparison respondent is presented with two objects at a time it is a paired of object. So, then only he will tell okay, this is soft this is hard okay. then ask to select one object in the pair according to some criteria like two garments are given tell me which one is warm that is paired. Okay. This is used only when few items are compared. So, you cannot use this paired comparison for say large thousand different types of articles are there we cannot use this uh, type of way. only few articles are then you can compare. Okay. For example, comparison compare the softness property of cotton with polyester or wool with polyester, then only this type of paired comparison can be used. So, and he can only tick which one is softer or which one is warmer. So, it is used one thing is that it is a first as one standard has to be given and uh, less number of variable uh, items should be there and he will only compare. Okay compare based on to a pair. Next is the rank order respondents are presented with several objects simultaneously like wool is given. So, 10 different types of wool or 3 different types of wool uh, garment is given and he is asked to rank in terms of particular order okay, particular then asked to rank them according to some criteria. For example, rank the following wool according to their softness. So, the wool uh, three different types of wools are given wool 1, wool 2, wool 3 then he has ranked wool 1 as uh, three rank softness, wool 2 has got one rank of softness, wool 3 has got two rank, but three what does it mean three here is it softest or harsh it is a soft or harsh that we have to actually specify we have to tell okay. for it if it is soft very soft you give it 3 or if it is very soft you give it 1. So, these things you have to give in detail okay. that is called rank order the respondent has to only rank the wool different types of wool. Third one is that it is a constant sum. So, uh, what is that? This is the it is a comparative constant sum. So, again we are comparing with the something okay. respondents are asked to allocate a constant sum of units among a set of stimulus objects with respect to some criteria. So, we have fixed some criteria suppose we have two different types of wool wool 1 and wool 2. The criteria which has been actually described you give thermal fineness and softness three criteria is explained to him and you give the rank order you give the value out of 100. We can set okay we can get tell it is a it is a arbitrary we can tell okay you give on the basis of 10 scale 
if you want a very detailed result or a very sensitive result, so you can increase that value. So, here say 100 with the 100 scale you rank ul 1 and ul 2 in terms of thermal scale. 100 means uh, best suppose, 100 means best. So, thermal scale he has given so uh, 76 for ul 1 and 70 for ul 2 fineness 88 and 84, softness 90 and 95. Okay. These are the scale. Now, if we assume these three are the three thermal fineness and softness are the best parameter to judge the characteristics of wool, then we will use three and if we feel some other parameter has to be incorporated, we can keep on incorporating. Now, then we will simply add constant sum. So, what is the total value of this attributes? 300. So, out of 300, UL 1 has got this ranking, UL 2 has got this ranking. So, they, then we have we will add this value, then we will tell okay, UL 1 is good or bad. So, higher value means better. Eh? So, UL 1 has got say at, as per thermal sensation, it has got higher than UL 2 but softness it has got lower than wool 2. So, but we cannot tell it is a softness wise uh, it is more or it is not that it is you have to sum you have to add. So, then based on this, uh, this addition we can tell okay, this is the. So, this is called constant sum a it is a comparative one comparison between wool 1 and wool 2. Then comes the to the non comparative here we do not have any reference, no standard value. Here what we will do? We have the a single object. In this scale no standard reference is provided okay, for rating. This scale can be categorized into two ways, one is continuous, another is itemized non comparative rating scale. So, what is continuous rating scale? also known as a graphical rating scale. Continuous rating scale is also known as graphical rating scale, rating scale like this one. We want to have comfort, softness or thermal sensation for a particular garment. So, in actually in uh, market research this is uh, very widely used and respondents are asked to actually rate to rank this value. In terms of comfort, you just select this. For a particular garment, you select 80, 75, 90. So, uh, for even garment 2, you see rank these things. Accordingly, it is. So, there is no comparison. So, suppose for a particular garment, we take say 100 respondent. So, they give all this value, then we use some statistical technique to uh, arrive at uh, certain value. So, this is the continuous one. So, then comes to the itemized, itemized non comparative rating scale. The respondents are provided with uh, a scale that has a number or a brief description associated with the category. So, these are of uh, actually different, actually three different types of it, uh, itemized. Eh? So, these scales can be of three forms one is called itemized graphic scale like for comfort you just graphically it can say this is a favorable graphic this is a indifferent it's a neither comfortable or not comfortable and it's a, a unfavorable it's a it's a discomfort so this uh, graphical picture we can use this one itemized scale or it's a verbal and this is most widely used itemized non comparative scale. So, verbal it is a completely satisfied like uh, if in terms of comfort you can say it is a very comfortable, moderately comfortable, it is uh, neither comfortable uh, nor uh, like this. Okay. Similarly, itemized numerical scale. So, we can use numerical value minus 3, minus 2, minus. So, we can use uh, any one of this. So, this is a itemized non comparative rating scale. So, these are of actually 
different type. So, three different types. Likert scaling, it has got actually, it is designed to study how strongly respondent agree or disagree with the statements and we can use 5 to 7 scale. Like this is the Likert scale, it is a depending on the agreement or disagreement. So, if I tell as a strongly disagree, it is 1, disagree. Okay. So, this is if we have you want to have this type of um, study, then we have to use Likert scaling. Staple scaling is that uh, it is a vertically unipolar rating scale with 10 categories rating from minus 5 to 5 plus 5, but 0 is not taken. So, like this one, it is a 0 point, it is a without neutral point. Okay. So, minus 5 to plus 5 okay. and third one is the semantic differential scale, it is 7 point rating scale minus 3 to plus 3 with 0 point. So, 0 point or 1 to 7 we can use this eh, with end points associated with the bipolar level like end point is bipolar one side it will be soft another side it will be hard smooth or rough cold or hot these are the bipolar rating and in between we can tell. So, this is that means there is no confusion earlier you have to define okay, 3 means uh, whether uh, most comfortable or least comfortable, here it is given that it is a 3 means extremely soft and minus 3 means extremely hard. So, bipolar labels are already given here. Okay. Now, there are based on all this uh, scaling method, there are different studies uh, carried out. So, we will uh, mention here a few uh, examples. Holly's used a number of itemized rating scale for sensation for perception of different types of perception. Like it is a four point scale he has used like uh, one is four is partially, mildly, two is definitely and one is totally. So, similarly these are in uh, comfort level. Okay. Similarly, on a 5 point scale he has used it is a 1 is totally uncomfortable and 2 5 is completely comfortable. So, in this way Hall is used this type of rating scale. Another is that comfort affective labeled magnitude C A L M scale which is used in US Army Natick Soldier Center. Okay. So, they, what they have used they have used that rating point at the range of minus 100 to 100, where minus 100 represent it is it's a greatest discomfort minus 100 and plus 100 is that it is a greatest comfort level. So, uh, this is a C A L M uh, scale. Another scale is used as Magnus thermal scale, okay, where it is used in 13 intervals okay, scale where uh, the same laboratory they have used. So, in this way like 1 in McGuinness uh, thermal scale 1 means I am so cold I am helpless, it is a 1 means it is a defined okay. and 13 means I am so hot I am sick. Okay. So, that means all these uh, labels are given, labels are expressed in terms of what? Expressed in terms of some uh, sentence, some value. Okay. So, while rating a person will uh, put himself in that rating scale and gradually it will give say 5, 6 whatever scale it will be giving. Okay. Similarly, CALM scale it is a 100 means greatest, greatest, greatest comfort, 100 plus 100 means greatest comfort and minus 100 means greatest discomfort. So, accordingly one can actually put it. So, uh, this uh, different this scales are also used and in uh, thermal comfort uh, psychophysical scaling of clothing comfort another comfort scale is used which is called category scale which is actually one type of rating scale is the most commonly used subjective scale. Okay. 
the category scale is exactly like rating scale we can just rate that extremely comfortable moderately comfortable slightly comfortable or extremely discomfort so this type of rating are given like or in terms of uh, number we can also give so category rating scale is actually uh, is a um, the person can rate his subject comfort sensation by placing him into the several descriptive category okay since less than five categories if we can use a five category or three category you cannot dis discriminate so uh, distinguish between the two sensation so better is that to use more number of category at least seven categories are actually uh, suggested so the main advantage of the category scale is that it's a simple versatile used okay and higher reliability so category rating scale we can use these are actually of two types one is the number category scale like uh, we have used uh, earlier in rating scale and descriptive category scale okay number 1 2 3 or descriptive category scale the main problem of category scale or particularly number category sorry descriptive category scale is the it's called category end effect means very interesting so if i am put in a situation where i have to scale it's a in a say one extremely comfortable then comfortable moderately comfortable slightly comfortable or extremely discomfort okay 1 2 3 4 or or another 5 so 5 or 7 scale the main problem is that in category age effect is that the person will normally don't like to put him in extreme point he would try to avoid himself rating as extremely comfortable or extremely discomfortable that means the category age effect results the seven point category scale being functionally reduced to five point so two points are reduced and five point scale reduced to three point scale so the common problem with the category uh, scale is that the normal tendency of a person is to avoid the end categories so that's the biasness okay so that's the uh, main problem with the category so it is said that category scale we should use large number of uh, categories then age effect will be minimized okay now we'll discuss the best uh, now we know the scaling pattern okay D what different types of scales are uh, there how to scale all these things we have discussed now we'll discuss the um, another uh, way of measuring the psychological or psychophysiological clothing comfort sensation is the wear trial which is actually most widely used in measuring the clothing comfort okay why do we use wear trial basically uh, if we measure the fabric characteristics cloth characteristics based on the objective measurement or subjective measurement we will not get the overall sensation okay and uh, the perception of sensory clothing comfort involves various sensory channels visual auditory smell taste and touch so this all, all these things we can only get if we wear the cloth so wear trial technique means it says that it's uh, you have to wear a total complete cloth and then we get the sensation okay that means out of all this uh, sensation that means skin plays an important role to sense the comfort level of clothing now the fabric properties mainly the type of fiber or yarn fabric structure fitness of the garment these are very important which is actually 
which uh, controls the which actually affect the wear trial response. Okay. Next is the environment, temperature, relative humidity and the wind velocity. So, for during wear trial we have to set the particular uh, environment humidity. So, that means, if a particular fabric uh, particular garment we develop from um, uh, fiber, yarn or fabric, but if we change the temperature that means, total sensation will be different. If we change the humidity of the uh, climate, it will give us total dif different sensation. So, we have to specify the uh, environmental condition, then only we can get the correct value of um, correct response as well as the activity level. So, these three parameters are very important because at different level of activities our sensations are different we get we generate different types of sensation. So, that that is why this activity level is extremely important. So, for any wear trial technique we have to define our clothing or garment, we have to define our environmental condition and we have to define our activity level. Then only we can uh, we can get the proper uh, response by a particular person. Okay. This is the basic design of the wear trial technique and the main purpose of wear trial is to gather information from the respondent at a garment level. We cannot get the wear trial in the fabric level. Okay. At the proper garment level, we get the perfect information. So, therefore, the wear trial is an important technique for comfort research, clothing comfort research. Okay. Various sensory attributes descriptors are generated from the response of the respondent okay. and we will we get the information okay. and this is only possible a during the wear trial. Okay and uh, psychological scales are designed. So, after uh, doing all these things like our uh, fab garment uh, selection, environmental selection, activity selection, then we have to design the, the psychological scaling system. Okay. The according to the predetermined protocol, you have to define the protocol, then wire trial technique you have to conduct the wire trial technique and collect the data. So, this actual necessity of the actual wear trial, why do you need wear trial? Why cannot we have only the objective testing data and get the value? As we have uh, mentioned that wear trial is very important because that we get the particular overall sensation only after the wearing the cloth, only after the actual activity, only at the actual environmental condition. Suppose, I am trying to develop a cloth for extreme cold okay. and if I measure only the uh, thermal transmission, thermal transmission or moisture vapor transmission or air transmission, it may not give the exact uh, comfort level of a person at that say minus sub, uh, sub zero to minus 30 degree Celsius, minus 40 degree Celsius temperature it will not be able to give, we will not be able to simulate that, that situation. Okay. So, for that we have to develop cloth, we have to generate that environmental condition, then only uh, through wear trial we can get the actual sensation. Suppose, the fabric is thermally it is a perfect, okay, but touch wise it's, it's, uh, it does not give proper sensation proper uh, then we may feel discomfortable. So, to generate reactions of wearer to any perceived discomfort sensation produced by the different climatic condition. So, that we uh, try to get the uh, this all this discomfort level at different uh, level of activity different climatic condition we try to get this value uh, this is only possible through the wear trial technique. So, that 
different uh, external uh, stimuli and physical activities. So, different types of external stimuli heat, moisture, wind all this combined effect we get. Okay. This stimulations are normally generated under specific conditions like softness mechanical stimulation or the softness a scratchiness prickiness this only we get at the particular condition like wool if we wear wool and cloth at cold condition we may not get the pricky sensation pricky sensation we will get only at the warm and sweating condition that only we can get uh, this type of sensation mechanical stimulation we can get or thermal stimulation we can get only in wear, wear condition okay. and sweating rate physical activities. So, if I uh, start walking I will have different types of physiological uh, perception or psychological perception of that because of the different physical activities. Okay fitness of clothing like clothing if it is tight fit or loose fit my total perception or total sensation will be different than if it is a uh, tight fit. Okay. So, different so this are only possible in wear trial okay. that is why wear trial is very much necessary like environmental condition <coughs> even if the temperature changes or humidity of the environment changes little bit total sensation keeping all other activities constant only by changing the humidity or air velocity my total perception will be different. So, we have to design very carefully depending on the actual application actual application of the clothing. Okay. Now, what are the steps that we have di uh, discussed? we have to generate the sensory attributes okay, of the wearer. So, this all these steps of uh, wear trial we will discuss in the next class. Okay. Thank you.